guys! Today I'm going to review the Mephisto Waltz. It's an American film that came out in 1971 directed by Paul Wencoes and it's adapted from a novel by Fred Mustard Stewart. Runs 115 minutes. It stars Alan Alder as Miles Clarkson, Jacqueline Bessett as Paula Clarkson, Barbara Parkins as Roxana Delancey, Bradford Dillman as Bill Delancey, and Kurt Jurgens as Duncan Eli. So it's strange casting of an Alan Alder in this film. Hey, I recognise that bloody actor. It's that daft bugger out of mash. Yes, that's right, Bones. It was just before MASH in 1972. It's also strange that Kurt Jurgens is in as well. Hey, I recognise that bugger as well. It's that bugger out of uh, The Spy Who Loved Me. That's my favourite Bond film. Yes, that's right, Bones. This is before The Spy Who Loved Me in 1977. So this was six years before that film. I'll have to review that film. It's one of my favourites yeah! as well. The plot involves witchcraft and soul transference. Kurt Jurgens is the villain and he plays a character called Eli and he's wanting to transfer his soul into Alan Alder's character because he's dying of leukaemia. So he's only got so long before he, he dies so he wants to get his soul transferred into Alan Alder's body. So he uses witchcraft and he does eventually transfer his soul into his body. Alan Alder's character, called Miles, his wife uh, eventually twigs onto what's happened. She's sort of the, the main one, played by Jacqueline Bessett. She, she's kind of the, the star of the film. It's all about her character. She realises her husband's uh, not who he really is. She eventually finds out about the witchcraft being used. That's a really big twist ending, because she ends up conjuring the devil get her own back. I'm ready to bargain. She eventually transfers her soul into Kurt Jürgen's daughter. She can have Miles, her husband again. But it's a strange ending when you think about it because it's not really her husband. It's Kurt Jürgen's character Eli that's transferred into her husband. So at the end of the film she's not really going with her husband. She's going with someone who's took over his body. It's a really um, bizarre, confusing plot. The film starts with some great titles and also brilliant music. The, the film scored by Jerry Goldsmith and he's done some brilliant films in the past. <laughs> past. Brilliant composer. And it's like heightens this film, the music. If it wasn't for the music, it wouldn't be such a good film. So Alan Alder has the difficult task of having two personalities. At the beginning, it's his own personality. He, he comes across as like a, like a shy type of character, like not much confidence. But when Eli's soul transfers into him, his character's more confident because he's a different person inside his body. I thought that was really good. You can tell the difference between both the personalities that Alan Alder's portraying. Really good acting there actually. Really good. Jacqueline Bessett who plays his wife. She's kind of like the star of the, the film. She realises what's happening with the, the witchcraft. It's a strange ending where she makes a deal with the devil because her husband's not really a husband at the end. It's Eli who's inside her husband. So when she makes a pact with the devil, she's not really getting her husband back. So there's two really good looking women in this film. Bah, them two women are hot in this bugger. Barbara Perkins is really good as Roxanne. She plays the evil daughter of Kurt Jurgens. And of course, Kurt Jurgens is always creepy. He, he's the villain. He's really good in this film. Bradford Dillman's good as well. He was married to the character of Roxanne in the film and he tells Paula about all the, the witchcraft that's going on. So that convinces her that there, there is witchcraft. The film's similar to Rosemary's Baby from 1968. There's even a party scene where the husband wants to go and the wife doesn't. So that, that's similar to Rosemary's Baby. So there's a lot of similarities. It's got creepy titles as well at the start. I, I like a film that starts off with creepy titles. 
There's a lot of Hammer films that do it, like The Devil Rides Out. Now, I, I like films set in the early 70s. It, it has a good look for horror. You get enough um, effects and violence. Also, it's not overdone like in modern films. So it's like a perfect balance. What I like about films that involve witchcraft and like evil forces and the devil and stuff is because there's a slight chance that uh, it could happen. Even if you don't really believe in it, there's like a, a bit of realism to it. There's certainly witches about, there is uh, cults that do witchcraft, that's correct. But whether or not there's like a genuine devil or genuine evil forces, it could or it couldn't. But there's definitely witches. It is strange though the ending because she does know it's not really her husband so for her to make a pact with the devil just to be with the like an imposter bit of a strange choice she's made it almost symbolizes about looks and personality she's not bothered about his personality she's just bothered about his looks so it looks like a husband even though it's not it's a serious film I like horror films that are treated seriously. It's also got some good dream sequences and a lot of wigged shots as well. The party scene's good. There's even a dog with a, a human mask on. That looks totally weird. It is a pity that when she does make the pact with the devil, you don't say the devil, you just say him outside the door. I would have liked the saying a shot of the devil in the film. The film does have a bit of a TV movie look to it though, like the certain parts where it looks a bit cheap. But overall I thought this is like an underrated gem. It's a very overlooked film. So out of ten I think I'd give it nine. Nine out of ten I would be impressed. Maybe it was a brilliant film. But do you think going to do like it? Give it top marks Phil. It's better than that bloody modern crap they make these days. Do some magic on you. Hey, you can get this bloody bugger off me. You're not doing any bloody hokey pokey on me, you bugger. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye. bye. This phrase I remember is indecently immature. I resented that. I was 20 years old. Critics, even when they're right, they're stupid. They don't understand.